Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ahabat Tifillah, we were speaking about uh, going over some of the benefits of Tafsir Surat Al-Ikhlas and mainly using or benefiting from the Tafsir a very short and concise Tafsir by uh, Sheikh Muhammad bin Saleh bin uh, Al Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Fi Kitab Al Kareem, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Kul Hu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakullahu Kufuan Ahad. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful, say, He is Allah, the One. Allahu Samad, Allah whom all creatures depend upon. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, he was not begotten, or he did, uh, he did not beget, nor was he begotten. Wa lam yakullahu kufuan ahad. And there is nothing like unto him, nothing that resembles Allah, nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the creator of the heavens and earth. The beauty that we see in the creation, like this beautiful flower and these other beautiful pictures that I've encountered in my endeavors, are all a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of these beautiful things which are a part of the cycle of life. But in fact, Allah is the giver of life, and all of this depends upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for its existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, and we, we already explained, we already explained uh, Allah samad, that the meaning of uh, a samad, which is one of the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that it's a perfect, it describes the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his completeness within all his, his divine uh, sifat, his divine characteristics. And that all of his creation depends upon him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning of that sifat. And we mention the hadith uh, that was narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala where he said that uh, as-sabad huwa kamil fi ilmihi wa kamil fi hilmihi wa kamil fi izzatihi wa kamil fi qudratihi ila akhir ma dhakara fi athar that Ibn Abbas mentioned that Allah Azza wa Jal is complete in his knowledge, complete in his his helm, and complete and perfect in his honor, in his majesty. And he is complete and perfect in his ability, his qudra. And that this perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing else, of course, is, per is perfect. Allah azza wa jal is perfect and free from imperfections, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lam Yalid. The Shaykh mentions that here where Allah says about himself that he did not uh, uh, that he was not born or, or that he did not give birth that the condition of something that was born is of course that it's in need something that is born is in need and this is why islam uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates the fact or negates the claim of his birth and this is of course one of the claims of the christians that they say jesus is god or jesus is the son of god so that god gave birth to jesus so to speak or that Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, 
that he is God incarnate or all the various other beliefs attributed to him, alayhi salatu was salam, which are false. Because that which is born is in need. And that which gives birth uh, is also in need, and this is a nux to give birth. But especially that which gives birth is in need, and that which, uh, uh, or, or, or to be born, means to have needs. And to give birth, of course, requires or is usually the condition in nature that something uh, needs to sustain itself, to sustain its species. It's a process. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from all of that. لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوَانَ أَحَدْ and there's nothing like it because everything else in creation is born and, and, and conceived. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from his creation and he gives life and gives death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ أَنَّ يَكُنْ لَهُ وَلَدْ وَلَمْ تُكُنْ لَهُ صَاحِبَةً وَخَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ So Allah negates that He uh, has a, a son or a child and negates that He has a companion or a spouse and then He affirms for Himself وَخَلَقَ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ that he created all things, and he is has full knowledge of everything. This is Allah Azza wa Jal. So as we mentioned, Al Walid Yahtaj al Sahiba Taladhu. That uh, something that is born, it requires that something gave birth to it. And Allah negates that. Because Allah was not born. But rather Allah is the creator of all things. So nothing is like unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his uh, sifat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates uh, that he has, uh, that he is a, uh, a father, so to speak, or that he was born, or that there's anything that was resembles him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <laughs> That there is nothing uh, that resembles him. And he is the all hearing and all seeing. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also negates that there is anything like unto him, anything that resembles him. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same time affirms that he does have divine characteristics. We have characteristics. Our characteristics are not divine and perfect. So this is where we differ with our creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. He hears and we hear. He sees and we see. But his seeing and hearing is perfect. And our hearing and seeing is imperfect and limited. I can hear what's in this room. I can see what's in this room. Perhaps I can hear something a little outside the room that I'm in now. But I can't hear the communication between ants. I can't understand and comprehend nor hear the communication between many of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation or anything in fact outside of this room or perhaps even some of the minute things that live in this room I cannot hear nor comprehend nor can I see them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears everything so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself that he has characteristics which the creation does have characteristics but they are not the same. There's nothing like unto him. And this is a negation of those mubtadi'ah, 
who claim that Ahl Sunnah makes a comparison to, between the creation and the creator and say that they are the uh, the Mushabbiha, that they are the, the like the group, some of those original sects or early sects in Islam who tried to make a comparison between the creator and the creation, saying that those characteristics were were uh, the, Allah's divine characteristics are like his creation. Ahl Sunnah is free from that. Instead, we affirm what Allah affirms and negate what he negates. He negated, he said, He said, There's nothing like him. So we negate that. And he is all hearing and all seeing. But he affirmed for him, himself, that he hears and sees. So we say, Yes, Allah hears and sees. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If he can have it, Kareem. Ar-Rahman al-Arsh Istawa, the most merciful, Ar-Rahman. He rose above his throne. We say, yes, he rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't know how, but we affirm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a sifat of ulu. That he, uh, and, and, and that it means to raise. Ar-Rahman al-Arsh Istawa. We affirm that Allah istawa ala arsh that he rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty, not like, not in a way making a resemblance between the creation that I'm over my chair, that I'm over my children, that I'm over this, I'm over that. La. But rather we say Allah rose above his throne, yes, in a manner that suits his majesty. So there we negate what Allah negates and we affirm what Allah affirms. Unlike the Asha'ira, unlike the Maturidiyah, Unlike uh, these uh, the mutashab the mushabiha, unlike the Jahmi and the many other the groups who negate Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's divine uh, attributes, that say no, uh, istawa means istola or it means this. They they make ta'wil in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's divine attributes. They change the meaning. Ahl Sunnah says la. We accept Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's. Uh, divine attributes as they are. Just leave it. Stop where the Salaf stopped and you'll be safe. And I'll end with that. Stop where the Salaf so stopped. And this is a, a beautiful qa'ida that the Salaf said. I believe it was one of the Sahaba or one of the Tabi'een radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'een who made this statement to stop where the Salaf stopped and, and you're safe. Don't try to make uh, to to Use your intellect to explain away things that we have no knowledge of. And the last benefit the Shaykh mentioned about this surah, he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he said, "Innaha ta'dilu thulth al-Quran, meaning surah al-Fatiha, surah al-Ikhlas, that it it equals to a third of the Quran." The Shaykh mentions that this is a great fadl, this is a great uh, benefit. However, this does not mean that it is sufficient for you, that it has the maqam of thulat al-Qur'an, that it has the place of a third of the Qur'an, meaning that you can read Surah Al-Fatiha th three times, I mean Surah Al-Ikhlas three times, and that's sufficient as reading the Qur'an. No, that's not what that means. But it just shows you the weight in the Azim of, of, of this Surah. Nor does it replace Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is very important that we have some understanding of that, that this uh, Surah is Azim, and this is because of its uh, Ta'zim of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala and its, uh, its affirmation of Tawheed, and within it we find the categories of Tawheed that the ulama of Ahl Sunnah have deduced from the adilla of the Quran in the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Tawheed al Rububiyyah, Tawheed al Uluhiyah, Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat, and the way in which we find that, Tawheed uh, al Rububiyyah, uh, we find that when Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, Kul hu Allahu Ahad, that Allah is uh, Al Ahad. That he is the one. This is a part of his 
his lordship, his rububiyah. Allahu Samad, his, uh, that he is, uh, all creatures are dependent upon him. This is some of his divine, one of his divine names and attributes. And this is a part of his lordship. You know, it, it, it contains both of those things. And this illustrates for us because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of anything and his creatures are in need of him subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us also that it necessitates uluhiya it necessitates that you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone because he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things all creatures are dependent upon him and need him for sustenance so therefore, he is the only one who is worthy of worship. And he was not begotten, nor was he begotten. So this shows us, this gives us uh, evidence for the categories of Tawheed. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.